840, 848. Wow. Wow. I'm going to hold it. Yeah. Just because I want to hold it because it's awesome. <laughs> Man. That's a hammer. All right. I know that uh, those of you who just watched my last video on Monday know that this is exactly what I was wearing when I did the intro to that video. And that's because it's the same day. Actually, um, this is going to get really confusing, but I just now shot the intro for the video that I posted on Monday, but now I'm about to go fishing on this day, which will be posted on Wednesday. Anyhow, that's kind of confusing, but welcome back to another episode of Darius Fishing. Today, I'm still in Texas. I'm on Sam Rayburn. Um, I'm actually filming a project for GoPro that I'm not allowed to talk about, except for the fact that we're filming for GoPro. So super cool project. Can't do a lot of talking. I can only use one chesty, but hopefully we'll catch some gigantic, huge Texas bass. These things get huge here. Place looks super, super juicy, but I uh, wanted to show again the two baits that we're using or that I'm using, uh, pad perch and the poppin perch. Uh, designed both of these baits are designed by one of my good buddies Todd Castledon if you haven't watched my last video where I fished with Todd uh, I'll put the link whatever the, the tag up top you can click on that and I'll link it to the I'll put it at the very end of this video that way if you want to watch a cool video after this one you can see me and Todd Castledon catch them pretty good also Todd caught a nine foot gator <laughs> so yeah anyhow gonna get back to the fishing um, gonna go throw a little frog around and see if I can get some uh, some good topwater blow-ups and film this deal and uh, yeah make a good video for you guys so if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and um, catch you guys here in just a few seconds Dude, I just had a giant all over this thing twice. So one thing that Todd told me yesterday about this pop, this uh, pad perch and the popping perch, as you can see the tail design, it's made to be that way. It's made to look like a perch or a, um, Todd calls it a perch, but I call them a brim. It is a brim, but Todd just says perch all the time. That's why they named it this thing. It should be called popping brim, but popping perch, pad perch, tail is made that way for a reason don't trim the tail don't cut it at all it's made to be bigger it's made to be flat it's made to be this shape of a v for a specific reason is because when it's laying on a lily pad it looks exactly like a perch or a brim laying up there i know y'all can't see that but it looks extremely extremely real as soon as that thing comes off here i'm gonna let me get a little bit closer to the boat. Don't know how well y'all can see that, but that tail just lays perfectly flat. It looks exactly the same shape as a fish's tail. And, uh, hang on. Right there. It looks exactly the same shape as a fish's tail laid sideways. That's why he designed it this way. Very, very specific. Don't call a pop and perch a frog in front of Todd. Hey, are you fishing a tournament right now? I'm not. Do you have a scale? I left mine in the truck. Yes, I do. Oh, a, a little old fish, yeah. huh? He said, Who a tiny that? one. Man, I cleaned out my boat and I, I moved my some stuff around. I left my container with my. She has caught a tiny, tiny little baby bass, and she needs to get a weight on it. On a medium light rod. Yeah, yeah. About two foot from the boat. Eight forty, eight forty-eight. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna hold it. Yeah. Just because I want to hold it because it's awesome. <laughs> Man. That's a hammer. Yeah, that, that rod right there is spin cast. Wow. 14 pound line. You mind if I put this on my YouTube channel? Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Can I can I put you on it too? Absolutely. Do you mind? Yeah. I run Big Dog Outfitters. Awesome. And uh, I got here on Raven. She has caught her new personal best. What did you say it was? 848? 848. 848. Uh, Lacinco watermelon with red flake. Wow, that's awesome. What, what, what guide services say you were? Uh, Big Dog Outfitters. Big Dog Outfitters out here putting clients on hammer. That's why you come to Texas. Like some of these creeks are just absolutely gigantic. And uh, the thing about this lake is 
just just from being here i fished with todd yesterday and i'm just here by myself today but like we so we fished pads yesterday lily pads we fished this right here this is hay grass you know without knowing anything about the place that's what we fished yesterday so that's just what i wanted to come fish today there is so much of it like i looked on google earth trying to just find a place that like i don't I, yesterday when i was with him i've never been here like i have no clue where we fish at yesterday like for a million dollars i couldn't go back to any of the same places just because i i just was lost so just looking on google earth and trying to find a place and just kind of randomly guessing on where to come man it's, it was really hard because there's so much of this stuff so really all i'm doing is pick this pick a creek and just put your head down and go to work i mean that's kind of like practicing you know for a tournament on a new lake i just put the trolling motor down and basically just go fishing that's all all i know how to do and then you know maybe be able to put something together i did get two bites earlier this morning in the pads um again i'm just doing this reeling style how todd did yesterday don't know if that's the best way to do it or not but i know that todd really knows what he's doing and knows what he's talking about so that's well, hey that's what i'm gonna do you listen to the man who's got knowledge I do know that as the sun got up yesterday and it got on top of these pads, when, you're, when your frog is on top of a pad, it makes a silhouette. And so these the fish yesterday, they weren't just blowing up on them when the frog would get in the holes. They were actually hitting it better when it was on the pads. And so as the sun gets up more, it creates more of a silhouette. Um, what I mean by that is when the I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean by that later. Todd showed me yesterday, but um, it's cool. So as the sun gets up, this bite, I guess, is going to get better. That's kind of what Todd said. The sun gets up more, they can track this frog better going across the top of those pads. You know how when you put a um, like to make a green light or a red light, you put a red piece of film over it or a green piece of film over it, over the light and the light shines green. Well, the sun hits that pad and it makes, like it lights the pad up. So when this frog goes over it, it literally makes a shadow on top of it so the fish can track that thing. And you'll see little bitty bait fish on top of these pads, uh, like fish chasing them up. And they freaking, the bass just could blow through those pads and eat them because it's so, it's like, it, it's almost, even though there's so much stuff going on, man, this frog, they can really, really track it really good. And uh, I think that's why you get so many bites on it. Todd's the one who gave me this idea. So I'm not stealing credit for it because it is pretty freaking cool. All right, so there's a lily pad right there. I put the pad perch on top of it and you can just see what it looks like on the pad. Now watch this as the camera goes underwater. You can still see that that frog, like you can, it's lit up and I'm gonna try to move. I don't know how well that shows, but you can see as this thing's moving across the top of that pad, you can see how it's silhouetted. Now just picture that across all of these pads and you know, it's easy for the fish to, tr to track that frog while it's uh, going across the top of the pads. So, you know, like I was saying, it doesn't have to be in a gap for the fish to see it. And actually, they probably see it better when it's on the pad and they come up and blow through those pads so hard. There's a good one. Unfortunately, that's not the one we need for the camera, for the video, but it was a good one. I heard him chase. He blew up on a bait over there on the bank. All these fish here in Texas are super dark. Cool thing was I heard him blow up. I turned around weather and first cast on him, I caught him. Man, there's, 
they're all back in these bushes. I wish I had a swim jig tied on, honestly. There we go. Crush that popping pad. Popping perch. Just fishing this popping perch over hydrilla. There's a chunk two pounder. Pretty fish. I'll let her go. Just working this popping perch. You can see all this hydrilla down here. Came up and choked it. He freaking had it. He took it under. Oh, he's going to get it again. God, they're crushing this thing. Little one, throw him back. There's so many fish that live in here. I thought that last one was big, the way it boiled. They are crushing this freaking popping perch. <laughs> I mean, they are freaking crushing this thing. Little one, but I mean, they're acting like they have never seen this before. And I know they have because Todd them been through every freaking fish in this whole lake. That was two minutes and 30 seconds on the GoPro after I caught my last one. Stupid. They're like in every freaking little gap, too. Like, you can literally call your shot. If I wouldn't have missed one, I would have caught five back here. Or four back here. I see them blowing up ahead of me, too. They're in every little pocket like that right there. Told you. Told you. Told you. That was the next freaking cast. Those fish were exactly back to back and I just said they're in every single pocket and I pitched at the, or I cast at the very next little pocket. Caught this one. Another little one. Nothing to ride home about. But at least we having fun by. If these were all five pounders, we'd be in really, really good shape. Dude, I'm freaking jacked the piss up right now. I've never been to a lake where I feel like I'm gonna catch one every single cast throwing a frog. And they hit it so freaking hard. I actually just caught one and the camera wasn't rolling. I didn't, it's so hot out here that it's messing these cameras up. The cameras are getting bloody, bloody, bloody hot. But I just stroked me one about a, about a three pounder. That wraps up an extremely, extremely hot, excruciating, 
fun, but very, 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 very hot day out on Lake Sam Rayburn. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Honestly, I don't know a lot about this lake at all. I mean, I know some, I know some things, but I don't know any places. So it's been kind of cool just feeling my way around um, and learning this place. And quickly, I wanted to go over a couple things to remember when throwing a hollow belly frog or in this case, uh, perch. Um, first off, what I'm looking for. At Gunnersville, we fish a lot of matted grass. And so we fish a regular, this style frog, regular nose, regular style, you know, just hollow belly frog. Although there is grass here and it's, it's some underwater stuff. What I've been fishing today mostly has been just shade. Nothing special about it. Literally just fishing the shade. And the good thing is everybody that's watching this video has shade at some point in their lakes. And so, all I've been doing is using this quantum vapor. It's a seven, six heavy. It's actually got a pretty soft tip though. Um, so it's actually a really good rod for skipping. It's a little long if you're, if you're shorter, I don't think it would be a perfect rod for skipping, but it does have a lot of tip. Um, but yeah, I'm using this, using this Strike King popping perk. It's a new color, it's called Rotten Banana. I don't think the color matters. I just think this bait is a really good bait. Um, one thing I pointed out earlier, but I want to show again, is these fins on the side help basically become a weed guard. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. The fins on the side of this frog act as a weed guard almost, making this essentially weedless bait even more weedless um, because it's got an actual kind of a weed guard built into it. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind when you're skipping a hollow, hollow body frog around, when you're throwing it around, I'm trying to skip it around cover. I'm skipping it in the shade. The base of this big giant tree, I'm skipping it right to the very base, but I want it to be super, super quiet. And the main thing is I want to keep my eyes on the frog the whole time. The reason being a lot of times they might just come and suck it or they might blow up on it really hard and they got it. But sometimes they'll blow up on it really hard and you think he got it, but if you were watching, you could see that he missed it. And so then you can hit it a couple more times and it'll come back and get it. But the, if you would have swung that first time, he jumped and blew up all over it, made this big commotion and you swing, but he never had it. So then, you, you know, you might not be able to catch the fish. So first thing is definitely gonna be keep your eye on the frog um, if you can. Second thing, just after learning today and, and something that I've kind of always tried to do is put your frog or your bait, if you're skipping a jig, whatever it is, I want to try to put it somewhere that the guy behind me or the guy in front of me might not have put their frog or their lure or whatever. So I'm trying to skip this thing way back in there. You know, and sometimes it's funny. I just, I just skip as hard as I can. And now it might hit the very first tree, but sometimes it'll skip and skip and skip and skip and it'll go way back further than you ever thought you could cast. I just go ahead and send it pretty hard. I, I, I hit it a little bit harder than normal. Just try to fling it way back up in there. But today, several times that has caused me to catch a fish where if you would have just pitched to the outside of these trees, you would not have caught the fish. So first thing is going to be keep your eye on the bait. Second thing is going to be just send it. Just, just don't worry about it. Just send it. If you have to, you know, you hang up in a bush back there. A lot of times you're throwing heavy braid, heavy rod, and the frog has heavy hooks. So you can pull on it really hard and, and get the work in that thing. A lot of times you can pull it out if you hang up in a bush or something. So don't be afraid to just send it. The third thing I'm gonna say about throwing a frog is I think it's important to always walk the frog. Like you can walk it like a spook. It's a little bit harder just because it's not like the, a spook has a lot of weight and it wants to like go back and forth big time but that frog it will definitely walk if you hit it on slack line um, so practice with that when, once you start walking a frog you're going to get a lot more bites because you keep the frog in one place although it's moving side to side it's staying it's not coming closer to the boat very very much so i can skip right up there by that tree hit it seven or eight times and it hasn't even moved but probably five inches closer to the boat meaning it's staying right by that tree but it's causing a lot of commotion over there and several times today that has meant more bites for me so a couple three tips i wanted to give you if you're interested in buying the equipment that i've used today um i'll just show you today my frogging setup was a quantum vapor 
7.6 heavy. This is a Smoke S3 reel, 8.1 to 1 is a fast gear ratio reel. I like using that for skipping around bushes a lot of times because you skip in there. If you make a bad skip, you can wind your line back in really, really quickly, make another skip. Or if we have one blow up on it and you miss him, I want to be able to burn that frog back in and fire right back at him. So using a fast gear ratio reel on this, I'm using a 50 pound, this is 50 pound, 50 pound braid. And today I'm using the Strike King Pop and Perch designed by Todd Castle. This specific color is not available yet, I don't think, but it will be available very soon. Uh, but I don't think the color matters. I think just putting the frog in a good place, um, you know, and working it back correctly. If you want to get this rod and reel 25% uh, off, I've got a discount code 2019DIF25. I'll put it on the screen right here and you can screenshot it. And uh, that way you can get on quantum or quantumfishing.com, save yourself 25% off on anything on their website. That way you can uh, give it a good fling next time you go out fishing. But for now, I'm going to head on back to the house. It's super, super, super hot. I'm going to head to the hotel, not the house. Get cleaned up. Get ready to come back out this afternoon. And I will see you guys on the next one. By the way, if you haven't, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do me a favor and do that. I would really, really, really appreciate it. But until next time, see you guys later.